the external value okay, of the currency. So we already made this very clear. External value is your exchange rate. Internal value is your real purchasing power, which is inversely related to inflation rates. So this question looks very innocent. It's actually revising consequences of inflation. Is it in the syllabus? Yes, it is. Causes, consequences, cure. This is one of them. We are also revising causes of a change in the exchange rate. Both are in the syllabus, but they can be combined rather elegantly with a question like this. Okay? So I said before, when you have two things, always focus on the dartboard. They are asking you how would this event A affect B. All your points have to land on B in terms of how exchange rates change. So B is your dartboard, A is your dart. Okay? So I said this before. The exchange rate changes because of demand and supply factors. Demand and supply can be traced back to your demand for the country's exports, okay? which is a function of PIQ, right? Or demand for investments into the country. So this can be traced back to long run and short run. Supply of a currency is your country's demand for imports. As well as your outward investments. So I've already gone through these points. So if I were to draw my links, I can think of at least three points. First one, if your inflation rate is higher relative to other countries, This is a point that all of you are familiar with because in the notes when they say are uh, factors affecting x minus n they always say relative inflation rates okay so if inflation goes up because the internal value falls if my inflation rate is now higher it means my exports become less price competitive which means they become more expensive and don't forget rigor rigor means Definition, diagram, explanation of diagrams and assumptions. Then example. So we need this assumption. Export earnings fall. Okay. You see, uh, how much of sing dollar I need is tied back to how much spending I intend to make on Singapore goods. It's not about number of units, you know. Is about the total export expense uh, revenue. So here is a one to one relationship. The derived demand for your currency falls. One to one relationship, I can use the word derived demand. If I'm spending a million dollars less on Singapore goods, I need a million dollars less of Singapore dollar. You follow? Can I? Yes. Yes, yes. We have to mention and in export earnings. Eh? This is PQ, PXQX. Mm. That's why, by extension, this one is important PEV. So, demand for the currency falls. The first link. Second, you can even say imports are now relatively cheaper. If there's inflation in your country, like if the face masks are very expensive in Singapore, some people may want to buy from Malaysia. Okay? So, imports are relatively cheaper. As a result, demand for imports increase. So, import expenditure goes up. Supply of your currency goes up. I didn't put PDM. Because this is a change in demand. When there's a shift in demand, M will increase. It's not a change in quantity demanded. Huh? That's my second link. Third one, I can actually say if my inflation is very high and it destabilizes the economy. 
maybe not in the case of Zimbabwe, 233 million percent, maybe even Iran, thousands of percent, that's very high already. You are going to hurt investor confidence. Imagine your prices are so high, they come and set up shop here, it will cost them so much to buy raw materials. So, demand for investments into the country fall. Under my acronym, this is E, E for expectations. So, derived demand for the currency falls. See? You know when I'm writing points one, two, three, in my mind I'm thinking to myself.